On an upcoming Project Horus uh, high altitude balloon flight, uh, we're going to finally fly a live video payload. That's this box here. And what this contains is a Raspberry Pi Zero W, which is capturing the video from this camera here and compressing it. There's a Lime SDR Mini, which does the modulation and the production of a DVBS signal on 70 centimeters. And then the amplifier here, which produces that just a little bit under one watt of output power. That'll go into a um, kind of a handheld uh, antenna, which will be underneath the, um, the payload there somewhere. Uh, but there's no point doing this if we can't receive it. So we want to make sure that our receivers are working properly. We also want to know what our minimum detectable signal level is going to be so we can design our receiving setups appropriately. So what kind of gain do we need uh, in terms of antenna gain, but also pre-amplifier gain and noise figure. So to do that, we do a minimum detectable signal test. So I've bypassed the amplifier and I'm now producing a relatively weak signal, about 10 dBm from the output of the Lime SDR Mini. I'm attenuating it even further uh, by another, another 40 dB through here. And then I'm feeding it through a very long coax run uh, to my radio room at the back of the house. Uh, for these tests, we've found that physical separation is very, very important. Uh, otherwise, you can get a stray coupling from the transmitter directly to the receiver. Uh, as a bit of a test signal source, we're using a uh, Falcon Heavy launch flight with the camera pointed at the TV. So let's go have a look at the receiving system. And here we are at the other end of the coaxial cable. So I've measured the power received this particular end of the cable using a spectrum analyzer. Uh, using a 1 megahertz resolution bandwidth, which is approximately the same bandwidth as the transmitted signal. And we're getting um, negative 46 dBm of uh, signal power at the end of that coax. So now what we can do is, uh, is attenuate that signal even further uh, before it hits the receiver. Now in this case I'm just using an RTL-SDR, one of the V3 ones. Uh, the gain is set to essentially full for minimum noise figure. Uh, and I'm using Lean SDR and M Player to receive the signal. So at the moment, what I've found is I can add in approximately 44 dB, so there's two 20 dB attenuators and a 4 dB attenuator here, uh, before the signal starts to be undecodable or starts to have lots of errors. So uh, you can see the constellation diagram here for the QPSK signal. If I add in another, another 2 dB of, att of attenuation, we now start to get uh, quite a few errors coming through. It is actually still decoding though. So, ah, oh, there we go. And so with 44 dB of attenuation, that's approximately negative 90 dBm of signal power at the input to the RTL-SDR. So with some additional preamplification, we can probably drop that MDS a little bit further um, to improve the system noise figure. But it gives us a good starting point to figure out uh, what kind of antennas we need uh, and how, what our receive setup must look like to be able to receive signals from this payload. So there we go, some practical testing of receiver performance and system performance for a high altitude balloon flight.